Well, our organisation represents mining, oil and gas and the service providers to the sector across Australia. So we put a fair bit into our Productivity Commission review submission. Uh, it was over a year in the making. Uh, we had external research from RMIT and KPMG to support that. We did case study reviews with major resource sector employers and their IR professionals. And so we put in by far, and people might say that's a big call, but we've thought about this and we've seen the other submissions that have been made. Our submission is by far the most comprehensive to the Productivity Commission. And we've done that because we see this is a once in a generation opportunity. Uh, we don't see too many changes coming down the line in the short term, but over the next term of government, and as the numbers get worse on the economic side and the unemployment side, and the opportunities and the national prosperity, uh, people will dive into this Productivity Commission review exercise and look where they can do things to make uh, employing people easier. So um, in the short term, we don't hold a lot of hope for major changes um, in this political cycle. Indeed, the government itself has said that uh, they'll conduct this review and out of that they'll form their policy position leading into the next election. There are some things that are stuck in the political process at the moment, such as the Australian Building and Construction Commission, very important to our major offshore resource sector projects. They're proposing to extend it not just to onshore but also to offshore. Um, that will be something of high value to, to the marketplace. Uh, getting the right of entry laws back to what they were in 2007, allowing trade unions to come onto workplaces, but we don't want a whole heap of unions coming onto workplaces uh, multiple times a day. So it needs to be regulated. In our sector too, uh, people uh, saw a change just before uh, 2013, before Labor lost office and said uh, you have to take union officials to remote sites, so that means getting a chopper flight, $36,000. Somebody on the production side might lose their spot on the rig. Everyone on the rig's unionised. It's ridiculous. They can leave at the helipad. Underground mines, there's disputes over what is the definition of a lunchroom for right of entry visits, and they could be uh, an hour underground in one of the lunchrooms. So the Labor Party said in 2007 they weren't going to change the right of entry law. They did. And so in the Parliament at the moment is a proposal to move it back to what it used to be. So those changes, we think, uh, they're common sense and there's some hope some of those will go through the Industrial Relations Tribunal. Absolutely not. We don't even have the right IR system for 2000. Uh, the system's been re-regulated. Um, at the time when the system got re-regulated, we thought it was going back to the Keating area, which was 1993, but it's actually gone back beyond that. So we find that quite disappointing. So let alone what might happen in five years' time, we think we're probably 15 years out of date already. Well, they do neither, really, in a way. Um, at the end of the day, innovative businesses find their way around IR systems and employment laws. But at the margins, particularly on big projects, there are a lot of additional transaction costs that we prefer not to have. We were chaperoning union officials around complex websites, uh, whether we have to move people to offshore oil rig platforms, and the logistics of that when you've got hundreds of right of entry visits, uh, sometimes in a period of uh, three months. Uh, it does add a lot of transaction costs to the business that we prefer not to have. I think the biggest issue though is for these, in our sector, these mega projects where projects are delayed. They're delayed through environmental impact assessments, sometimes it can take up to four years. But on the industrial relations side, we're required by law, if we want a pre-start agreement, to have an agreement with a union or a group of unions. And there's no competing alternatives. So that uh, delays the project and often puts the uh, wages and conditions to a level that are, are not competitive anymore. Our own research uh, that we put into the Productivity Commission that we had commissioned by KPMG showed that productivity in our sector has declined by 45% in the last 10 years. Now people will get into the debate about how that's come about uh, in terms of the multi-factor productivity, the capital spend that's been massive in our sector but by any measure we've come off from being way ahead of all industry average to well below in a very short period of time. So you add that to 
uh, environmental assessments, government approvals, the cost of labour, and the fact that people in the developed world, we're not talking about developing nations, but we're behind in every sector pretty much, uh, whether it's oil and gas, coal, hard rock mining. So the story's not a good one, and the IR laws haven't helped in that regard.